Angel, as the Diocese of Springfield celebrates the rite of ordination to the Order of Deacon. Would you please join in singing our entrance hymn, The Servant Song. Would you please stand?
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. On this beautiful day, one of those rare days that we've had, that's so beautiful, it is indeed a joy to gather together as the Church of Springfield with Bishop Timothy McDonnell, our Bishop Emeritus, with my brother priests and deacons, with men and women religious, with our families of our soon-to-be-ordained deacons, with parishioners, we all come representing the prayers of the whole church as we prepare for this ordination. Bienvenidos a todos a esta celebración de la ordenación de nuestros diáconos hoy. As we gather together, conscious of God's call to our six men who are to be ordained, and of the call that God gives to each one of us, let us reflect on how we have responded to that call. For those times when we failed through our sinfulness, let us seek God's forgiveness and mercy. Camino que conduce al Padre, Señor, ten piedad, Señor. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us one day to life everlasting.
Let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these, your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Paul. reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, bring forward the tribe of Levi and appoint them as servants of Aaron the priest. They shall do the work required for the tent of my presence and perform duties for the priests and for the whole community. They shall take charge of all the equipment of the tent and perform the duties for the rest of the Israelites. The only responsibility of the Levites is to serve Aaron and his sons. The word of the Lord. God is king, the world was made firm in its place, God will judge the peoples in fairness, give the Lord glory, glory and
Lectura de los Hechos de, de los Apóstoles Como el nombre de los discípulos iba en número de, de los apóstoles, iba en aumento. Hubo quejas de los llamados elis, helenistas contra los llamados hebreos. Porque según ellos, su viuda será tratada con negligencia en la atención de cada día. Los doce reunieron la, la asamblea de los discípulos y le dijeron, no es correcto que nosotros descuidamos la palabra de Dios por hacernos cargo de las mesas. Por lo tanto, hermanos, elijan entre ustedes a siete hombres de buena fama, llenos de espíritu y de, sab de sabiduría. Les confiaremos esta tarea mientras que nosotros nos dedicaremos de lleno a la oración y al ministerio de la palabra. Toda la asamblea estuvo de acuerdo y eligieron a Esteban, hombre lleno de fe y Espíritu Santo, a Felipe, Procoro, Nicanor, Timón, Palmeras y Nicolás, que era un proselita de Antio Antioquía. Los presentaron a los apóstoles, quienes se fueron se pusieron en oración y les impusieron las manos. La palabra de Dios se difundía en el número de los discípulos en Jerusalén. Aumentaba considera considerablemente e incluso un buen grupo de sacerdotes había aceptado la fe. La palabra del Señor. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned his disciples and said to them, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, Whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord.
Let those to be ordained deacon please stand. Angel L. Delgado. Michael W. Forrest. Andrew J. Hogan. Osvaldo Mendez. John F. Miller. Robert F. O'Connor. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these men, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. After you have been presented as candidates, I give you the option of standing during my whole homily or being seated. Excellent choice. My brothers and sisters, it's a joy for all of us to be here in this cathedral today. And indeed, we know that our faith is called to be countercultural against the culture of the day. And it is because Jesus, our Savior, sets that tone as he speaks to us in the Gospels. Our world today tells us to look out for number one, that we all have to try to be on top, that we all have to try to have the best, and that is the only way to happiness. But what does Jesus tell us in the Gospels? Jesus tells us that we're called to really be happy when we're reaching out to serve others. And isn't that the whole theme that we hear in our readings today for the diaconate? Moses the great lawgiver and leader of God's people who led them from the slavery of Egypt to the promised land, realizes that his ministry to God's people must reach out further to bring others into that leadership so that he indeed can share that ministry and that God's people could be ministered to as they make that arduous journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. And so he calls on others to participate in his leadership, in his ministry. And he calls on them not to single them out from the people, but he calls them out specifically so that the people may be well served. We find that too. In the Acts of the Apostles, the Apostles knew that they could not carry on the ministry that Jesus had given to them unless they had some help, unless someone would assist them in that ministry. And so through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, they elect those seven 
who will serve as deacons in helping them specifically in works of charity, in reaching out to the widows and the orphans and those who are the least served within that community. It was not to single them out from God's people, but it was to put them in the midst of God's people so that Jesus' ministry may be carried on through them. In our day and age, in our time, when society tells us to look out for number one, Jesus' words from Matthew's Gospel still echo to us today, telling us that happiness is not closing in on oneself and becoming isolated and looking out for self, but rather true happiness is found when we're able to reach out to others, to give of ourselves in a very specific way. Anha, Andrew, John, Robert, Osvaldo, and Michael are being called from the community to be ordained as deacons so that they can be in the midst of God's people as men of service, as bringing to those in hospitals, in prisons, to the hungry, to the homebound, to those who would not find the presence of Jesus anywhere, but through their reaching out to them. And so through the parishes, through their ministry at the altar, and in their ministry of charity amongst God's people, they are charged with bringing the presence of the Lord Jesus into the community. Pope Francis says, we cannot be a self-referential church. We have to be constantly looking out. If the world does not come to us, then we are charged to bring Jesus to the world. And that indeed is the essence of our ordination ceremony today. Our six candidates, soon to be ordained deacons, Hear the history that goes back all the way to the Hebrew scriptures. And they are called to follow in that tradition of service, of reaching out to God's people, and of spending their lives so that they can bring the presence of Jesus to others. What they are called to do, specifically in their diaconal ministry, each one of us is called to do in our lives, to be conscious that our faith cannot turn inward on ourselves, but rather that we need to reach out to bring others to the Lord Jesus. Ultimately, in our world, those who turn inward, who seek only their own gain, find that life can become very empty. It can become lonely and isolating. It is only when we reach out, when we allow the gifts and talents that God gives to each one of us to reach out in the surface of others that we find our true happiness. So in this day of ordination, in this day of celebration, let us reflect on what we have heard in these readings. We are a people called not to be self-referential, but we are truly a people who are called to be dynamic in our witness to the world, in reaching out to others, and in bringing them to Christ. Our six candidates today for the office of deacon are not being singled out, but rather they are being further placed in the midst of God's people so that they may serve well and bring the word of God to those who hunger for that faith. May our prayers for them today be that God's Holy Spirit through the grace of this ordination will be upon them 
so that their ministries may truly shine forth the light of Christ into a world that sometimes is mired in such darkness that it does not even recognize the call to faith. May they stir in the hearts of those whom they serve the faith that we need to find salvation in our Lord Jesus Christ. For ultimately, as we have heard through our readings today, that is the purpose of this ordination. It is the purpose of the church and each one of us as the people of God. Beloved sisters and brothers, since these, our sons, who are your relatives and friends, are now to be advanced to the order of deacons, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are to be raised. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will help the bishop and his priest in the ministry of the word of, of the altar and of charity, showing themselves to be servants of all. As ministers of the altar, they will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, and distribute the Lord's body and blood to the faithful. Furthermore, it will be their duty at the bishop's direction to exhort believers and unbelievers alike and to instruct them in holy doctrine. They will preside over public prayer, administer baptism, assist at and bless marriages, bring viaticum to the dying, and conduct funeral rites. Consecrated by the laying on of hands that comes down to us from the apostles and bound more closely to the surface of the altar, they will perform works of charity in the name of the bishop or the pastor. With the help of God, they are to go about these duties in such a way that you will recognize them as disciples of him who came not to be served, but to serve others. Now, dear sons, you're to be raised to the order of the diaconate. The Lord has set an example that just as he himself has done, you also should do. As deacons, that is, as ministers of Jesus Christ, who came among his people as one who served, do the will of God from the heart. Serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. Since no one can serve two masters, look upon all defilement and avarice as serving false gods. Since by your own free choice you present yourselves for the order of the diaconate, you should be men of good reputation, filled with wisdom in the Holy Spirit, as were those once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity. As for those among you who will exercise your ministry committed to celibacy, know that celibacy is both the sign of pastoral charity and an inspiration to it, as well as a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. Compelled by the sincere love of Christ the Lord and living in this state with total dedication, you will cling to Christ more easily with an undivided heart. Free yourselves more completely for the service of God and his people and minister more effectively in the work of a spiritual rebirth. Whether or not you have been called to holy celibacy, be firmly rooted and grounded in faith, and show yourselves chaste and beyond reproach before God and man, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and the stewards of God's mysteries. Hold the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. Express by your actions the word of God which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people, brought to life by the Spirit, may be a pure offering accepted by God. Then on the last day, when you go out to meet the Lord, you will be able to hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Candidate Robert O'Connor 
since by your own free choice you present yourselves for the order of deacon. You should be a man of good reputation and filled with the Holy Spirit, as were those once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity. You will exercise your ministry committed to the celibate state. Know that celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and an inspiration to it, as well as a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. Compelled by the sincere love of Christ the Lord in living in this state with total dedication, you will cling to Christ more easily with an undivided heart. You will free yourself more completely for the service of God and man and minister more effectively in the work of spiritual rebirth. Like those once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity, you should be men of good reputation, filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit. Express by your actions the word of God which, which by your lips you proclaim, so that the Christian people brought to life by the Spirit may be a pure offering accepted by God. And so, dear sons, before you enter the order of diaconate, you must declare before the people of God your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask you, Michael, Oswaldo, Robert, John, Andrew, and Angel, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and benefit the Christian people? Amen. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition. I do. Deacon candidate Robert O'Connor, are you prepared to embrace the celibate state? And do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the, he in the service of God and man? I do. do all of you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life, in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world. Amen. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? Angel, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Michael, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Andrew, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Osvaldo. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. John, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Robert, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessings on these, his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the order of the Holy Diaconate. Please stand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, St. Joseph, St. Peter and St. Paul, St. Andrew, St. John, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Stephen, St. Ignatius, St. Felicity, St. Agnes, St. Gregory, St. Augustine, St. Athanasius, St. Dominic, St. Francis of Assisi, St. John Vianney, St. Catherine, St. Teresa, all holy men and women, Lord be merciful. Sinners, Lord, govern and protect your holy church. Lord, hear our Keep the Pope and all the ordained in the faithful service in your church. Lord, hear our Bless these chosen men. Sanctify these chosen men. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, with your mercy, the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, hear our prayers. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, hear our prayers. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, hear our prayers. Christ, hear us. Christ, Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer.
Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries. For we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. eternal joy. Come, Holy Spirit, and grant us eternal joy. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age, as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church his body adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so, In the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute 
to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by their example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your only Son, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I can't believe it took this long. Angel, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Amen. Michael, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Amen. Amen.
Andrew, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Osvaldo, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. John, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Robert, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, Practice what you teach. Amen. Peace be with you on home. God's blessing. Peace be with you, Andrew. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, John. Thank you. God's blessing. God's peace be with you. He 
is me trabajo. Señor, me cierran los ojos, sonriendo a ti yo mi nombre. En la arena he dejado mi barca junto a ti buscaré otro mar Lord have you need of my labor hands for service the poor and broken. Oh, Lord, in my eyes you were gazing, kindly smiling, my name you were saying. All I treasured, I have left on the sand. Close to you, I will find other sea.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Heavenly Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you, for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith so that you, Lord God, may always be praised. And so with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by 
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, these your servants, who have been ordained today as ministers for the church, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. My brothers and sisters, let us share with each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 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 Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As we conclude this wonderful Mass of ordination in which we have witnessed Christ's call to six of our brothers to serve in the diaconate, and indeed Christ called to each one of us to serve in his church as his witnesses, I would like to, first of all, thank our six newly ordained deacons and their families for all that they have done over these years of formation and for support that their families have given to them in such a wonderful way. So will the families of our deacons stand? Thank you. I thank Father Warren Savage, uh, Deacon Leo Coughlin, and Deacon Roger Carrier for all that they have done and all those who work along with them in our diaconate formation program uh, in sharing with our newly ordained deacons the wonderful training that is given in their classes and in their sessions. I thank their priest supervisors and their mentors for helping them along the way. Let us all thank them for what they have done. <laughs> to our deacons who have served as masters of ceremony today, to our servers who are the deacon class of 2021, uh, to seminarian Matt Barone, who will be ordained to the transitional diaconate next week, to our choir, Lad Pfeiffer, our organist, Michael, our cantor, uh, and to our Knights of Columbus who always add splendor to our events and to our ceremonies, to my brother priest and deacons, and to the women and men religious who are here, uh, to all who have made this day such a wonderful celebration of God's love and God's grace. Let us thank all of them. And finally, thanks to our newly ordained deacons for responding to God's call in such a generous way, for in, in, in participating so well in their formation and in striving to work toward this day of ordination. So would there six deacons please stand, newly ordained? Let us thank them. Now let us ask for God's blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor, we pray, amen. May he who has entrusted you with the preaching of the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses, we pray, amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world, we pray. Amen. May almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks.